Welcome to Chapter 9, Materials Requirement Planning. So in this chapter, what we are planning to do is to look what is Materials Requirement Planning, MRP as it is called, how this MRP is structured, and then we are going to look at the MRP problem and also different lot sizing techniques. Okay, that's the plan and objective for this chapter. Materials requirement planning is um, an important part of operations management in a company. It is the logic that ties production functions together so that you can have a materials planning so that you can produce your whatever you're trying to produce the products so this mrp basically consists of what are the different parts in a particular part that we are going to make or a product that we are going to make so a product might have multiple parts and a part might have multiple subparts and so on and so forth what is what drives the mrp system is the demand you remember we calculated we forecasted demand in chapter 3 that is what is driving the mrp system so from the demand when we know we looked at the capacity part of it and then we looked at different processes part of it and then we looked at an aggregate planning of what we are going to uh, whether we have the number of workers and how many workers we need and all that stuff after putting all those things into places Now we need to order the materials So for to order the materials We're going to be looking at the planning of ordering the materials and that is what is MRP MRP is pretty much used in various industries whether it is assembled to stock or make to stock or assemble to order, make to order, engineer to order, or a process kind of a company. Let's look at assemble to stock first. So companies like to buy the materials so that they can assemble those materials. For instance, Dell. Dell actually assembles to stock. But then the Dell assembles to stock is a little different than other things, other companies making, let's say, companies making cheese so that they get those cheese packets assembled and then they send it off to, uh, you know, a grocery store where you can pick up the cheese, right? And that is assembled to stock. Assembled to stock can be also watches, tools, appliances, all these things are assembled to stock. Now, make to stock, actually Dell, even though they are assembled to stock, they're also make to stock, simply because you can purchase a laptop on uh, Dell just right from the catalog, or you can actually design the laptop and then buy it. When you design the laptop, so it is made for you and then it is stocked for you so that is make to stock assemble to order is for instance trucks generators motors cars these are all where there is a final assembly and made from standard options that the customer chooses that is also assembled to order now Dell can be also made be an assemble to order in a way where you can order it, uh, where you can specify exactly what you want. You can choose the things that you want. You can ask them to assemble for you and then you can order it for from uh, from Dell. Make to order is more for companies which has specifications to manufacture something. So the customers basically will tell the companies the suppliers what exactly they want for instance bearings gears 
fasteners and all that they tell exactly what type of bearing they want what type of gears they want etc and then it is made to order for them engineer to order is for instance boeing gets their planes engineered to order so Boeing will request specifications from various vendors and the vendors will tell them this is what we can provide you and then they back go on back and forth and then they get the specifications done and then the, the then Boeing actually does the engineering to order process industries on the other hand like chemicals paints drugs food processes these are all very much process oriented they make according to a certain process so there are various companies and all these companies use this mrp okay before doing mrp there is a scheduling to be done it's called master production scheduling or mps this mps is the end items of finished goods sold to customers this mps is a major input to the mrp process all production systems have limited capacity and limited resources like we saw in chapter 4 the aggregate plan that we came up with in chapter 8 provides a general range of operations using these the chapter 4 and chapter 8 materials a master production production scheduler actually does the scheduling and then sends it to the MRP program. The master production scheduler maintains the master schedule and basically uses the aggregate plan that the company came up with, which we did in chapter eight, what they came up and what the company came up with, then uses that aggregate plan to do the production scheduling. Okay. Let's look at it in a different way. So here uh, is an example. So this is the aggregate plan. You have, uh, let's say, mattress production. For month one, it is 900, and month two, it is 920. Okay, so now we're going to take this month and convert it into weeks for production schedule. So for the first month, you have one, two, three, four weeks. And then I'm going to see how to do this master production. Okay. And for the second month, we're going to use the 5678. And then use this 950 for the production of the, this, the, the mattress production. Now, we can also look at it in various ways. We can look at it as different models and how you can schedule it for various models and how we can schedule it for various time frames and things like that that is a master production schedule okay the master production schedule has got certain time fences one is called frozen time fence another one is a slushy time fence and there is a liquid time fence the frozen time frames where the changes to production plans are not allowed it's frozen so customer orders are taken and then there is a frozen capacity there is a capacity that's what it is going to be and we're going to use that capacity and then we're going to freeze it according to the production plan whereas in a liquid the forecast and available capacity production changes are allowed so we can change the production uh, production plans and slushy is in between certain ways there are limited changes that it can be done so these are the different time fences in master production schedule now in whatever way that we do the stock which is currently held in inventory is assigned to a customer order and available for future customer orders and that is called available to promise 
Once the MPS, as a master production schedule, is completed, then it is taken as an input for the MRP system. And these are the MRP inputs. The MRP outputs are basically the reports and how from the reports the whole production is done from there. The MRP interacts with the schedule, the master production schedule. It also in, interacts with bill of materials. We'll see in a minute what is bill of materials. It interacts with inventory records and also output records. Now, customers place specific orders and that is generated by the salespeople because salespeople will know the customers very well. They have to talk to the customers and then they come out with, hey, these are the orders the customers are giving. They come out with the specific orders. And then those, those orders are carried through the company as is in operations management so that the production can begin and then the products are done through the aggregate production plan and the MPS, which is the production schedule, as well as for the materials resource planning, which is MRP. Now let's take a look at what is bill of materials. Bill of materials shows how the product is put together. Okay, it's basically a database or a file or um, a, on a piece of paper which is written all the products and the sub products and all that stuff the materials the parts the components and all that stuff that is the bill of materials not only it is given as parts and sub parts it is also done in such a way it has got a sequence in which the pro the product is created it is called the product structure file because it puts it shows you how a product is put together Okay, so a bill of materials shows how the product is put together. This is an example of bill of materials. So you have product A. This is the end item. This is, this is like, for instance, a laptop. A laptop A. What it has, there are two components. One is the screen and another one is the keyboard. Okay, so you have other things at the back or inside as well now in the keyboard part of the structure you have various things like you have the battery pack you have the ports and you have the um, you know different parts the different chips that go inside and all that stuff in the screen part of it you have the lcd screen and you have other things that are connections and things like that to the lcd screen something like that okay so what we can see here is this is a different bill of materials. Let's say this is a, um, a product like a machined product, okay, like a car part, of, a car part, okay, like a pump maybe. Now, this car part can have for each unit, A, it has two Bs, two subparts, two subparts which are Bs and three subparts which are Cs. This is like this. You have a chair. A chair has got four legs and it has got a seat and a backrest. So a chair has got one backrest, one seat, and then it has got four legs. And each leg has got a caster, a rolling caster. So that is how the bill of materials is put together. So in this example we have a unit a and unit a consists of two b's and three c's the two b's each one of the b's contains one d and four e's and each one of the c's contain one two f's f g uh, five g's and four h's okay so product c one product c consists of two F's, five G's, and four H's. This is how you need to come up with when I give you a problem. When I give you an MRP problem,
You need to read the problem and then you need to make sure you come out with this